He's recaptured the starting job, and in the past 10 games, he's played brilliantly. Cincinnati was without the services of their quarterback, Ken Anderson, the first four games of the year due to a broken finger in his passing hand. Anderson, who led the NFL in passing in 74 and 75, has since returned to his all-pro form. It's the Falcons versus the Bengals from Riverfront Stadium. The NFL on CBS. Today's game is sponsored by Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. Sony, which offers a full variety of innovative entertainment products. And by Hertz, the superstar in rent-a-car. Welcome to rainy Riverfront Stadium, the home of the Cincinnati Bengals, who come in here with a 1-12 and record, playing host to the Atlanta Falcons, who are 8-5, and and they're on the threshold of their first playoff berth ever. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender, along with Hank Stram. And, Hank, Cincinnati's 1-12, and but, oh, they're a dangerous team for Atlanta today. Yeah, they're an exciting team. They are. They're a very young team. Uh, Gary, as you know, they have 11 number one draft choice on their football team. But they're explosive. They can make the sparks fly and make a lot of things happen. This is going to be a good, tough game for Atlanta. Well, Atlanta is in a must-win situation. They come in here, as we mentioned, 8 and 5. They are right now tied with two other clubs for that wild card spot in the NFC. Let's look at that, as we have Washington and Philadelphia also with 8 and 5 records thus far. Well, there's no question about the fact, Gary, the only thing they can worry about is one thing, and that is to win. You see Atlanta is 8 and 5, Washington's 8 and 5, and so is Philadelphia. But uh, Atlanta has to worry about one thing, and that is winning the game today. They have to win to survive and stay in the uh, race for a, a, a playoff contention. Okay, now, as you look at the weather, you can see it's not ideal. It's been raining for two days here in Cincinnati. They did have the field covered about an hour and a half prior to game time. They took the cover off. They've been trying to vacuum the water off. But as you can see, it's a losing battle. Now, Hank, as you look at a game like this, who would it affect the most, Cincinnati or Atlanta? Well, I think any time that you have bad weather, uh, like we have here today, I think it's got to help the underdog team because so many things can happen because of the breaks that occur during the course of the game. One thing, a lot of people have the mistaken impression that any time it's a rainy, wet day like it is here today, that uh, it's better for the running game rather than the passing game, and that's not true. It's... The passing game is very important in this kind of weather, and I'm, I'm sure that we'll be able to see a lot of it today, providing the quarterbacks uh, are able to hold on to the ball well enough and they keep the balls dry. Ben Dreif and his crew, as you can see, Atlanta has won the flip of the coin. They have elected to receive, and as we view it, Cincinnati will be kicking off from left to right. The Bengals off to the worst start in the history of their franchise. They lost their first eight. They then defeated the Houston Oilers. They've lost four in a row. On the other hand, Atlanta, what a miracle team they have been thus far, pulling out so many games in the last seconds of play, coming in here with an 8-5 and five record. Should they win today, it would match their most wins ever in a season, which occurred in 1973 when they captured nine wins that year. Cincinnati is playing much improved football, and a lot of that reason is Ken Anderson. Anderson, after coming back from the broken finger, things didn't come together, Hank, right away. He had to get the form, the rhythm back. It, you know, you, there's no such thing as instant experience and instant timing, as you know, Gary, and that's what had to take place when he came back. The rehabilitation process was uh, uh, time-consuming. He's done a much better job with each passing game, and uh, uh, he's at a good stage of his passing performance at this stage of the season right now, Gary. Chris Barr is kicking off for Cincinnati. Dennis Pearson will down it, and you could see how treacherous the footing is as the rookie from San Diego State elects not to run it out, and Atlanta will set up the football at the 20-yard line. And here's their offensive picture. One change from a week ago at offensive tackle. Phil McKinley will start in place of Warren Bryant, who underwent knee surgery this week and is out for the remainder of the year. There's a the running backfield of Bean, along with Stanback, that Barkowski will operate with, and his wide receivers, Francis Rickman. Rickman having an outstanding year with 39 catches and tight end Jim Mitchell. You know, Gary, Cincinnati is a, a very good team defensively. They rank fifth in total defense, nine against the rush and seven against the pass. They're not that impressive offensively. They're 13 in total offense, 14 rushing and seven passing, which is very unusual for a Cincinnati team because normally they are a very outstanding team offensively. 
Okay, we're ready to go from the 20 yard line. The first play from the line of scrimmage. The rain may have subsided a little bit, but not much. And you can see it on the surface of the field here in Riverfront Stadium. The first call, and it's going to go to Bubba Bean and Bean across the 25 to the 27 yard line. Jim LeClaire, the middle linebacker for Cincinnati, making the stop. Homer Rice took over Cincinnati, replacing Bill Johnson after the Bengals lost their first five games. One thing that he has done, Hank, is he's changed the defense a little bit. They're playing with more of a four-man front. Yes, they are. They were using uh, Oklahoma defense entirely early. Now they've gone to the 4-3, and they seemingly are doing a much better job with it. They're more aggressive. So it's going to bring up now second down, three yards to go from the 27th. Again, they go to number 40. No, make that half to stand back this time as Jim LeClaire making the stop. And Sandback's going to be two yards short of the first down as we move to a third down. A gain of one to the 28-yard line. There's that defensive secondary, Breeden, who's replaced Lamar Parrish, who was traded to the Washington Redskins. Ken Riley having quite a year with three interceptions. Both he and Breeden have three each. Number 28, third and two. And I'm sure that in passing situations when they want to pick on somebody, I'm sure that Atlanta will try to pick on Breeden, the young player, number 34, on the left side. On a third and two yards to go, Baba Bean not able to get it, and it's gonna bring up a kicking situation. Reggie Williams, a third year man from Dartmouth, the right side linebacker made the tackle, and Atlanta will bring in John James, one of the outstanding kickers in the National Football League. You know, one thing that's really been a handicap to this Atlanta team offensively, Gary, is the fact that they really don't have a big sledgehammer back to get the big yard or yard and a half or two yards when they have to have it. There was a great illustration of it on that last third and two situation. James to kick. He'll be kicking from the 14-yard line. Tony Davis and also going backers Dick Duran for the Cincinnati Bengals. James coming in here ninth in the NFC, just under 40-yard average. It's going to be Tony Davis, and he's having trouble. And Davis is going to pay for it as he's going to be out of bounds just outside the 20-yard line. And you can see how elusive that football is going to be today as he had a tough time zeroing in on it. Tom Moriarty, one of the outstanding special team performers in the NFL, was down there to make the tackle. There offensively is a look at Cincinnati, an offensive line that's improved in the past few weeks. Earlier in the year, they were giving up too many sacks. Wilson coming from the Canadian Football League. Anderson with Dave Turner, the rookie from San Diego State. Curtis Brooks and Bass, outstanding wide receiver. That was a 43-yard kick that time by James, and from the 20 and a half, Ken Anderson going to throw, Bill Brooks. And that might be an indication how tough it's going to be to throw the ball. Well, one thing that's very obvious, when you play Atlanta, because they use a great variety of things, especially a lot of blitzing, uh, several weeks ago they blitzed about 50% of the time in the game. Last week they blitzed about 20 to 25 but one thing they do, uh, they play their defensive backs uh, very deep, and as a result, it's easy to throw in front of them, uh, providing you can get the timing and execution down. It's very obvious they're going to do that in this game here today. You took a look at the Falcon defense. Edgar Fields is playing in place of Jeff Miro as a dislocated toe. Here comes Archie Griffin. And Archie Griffin is close to the first down. Archie Griffin, who's had some toe trouble. He had his toe smashed in a game against New Orleans. Lost his starting job, but he's back in there to start this game. Just short of the first down at the 30. Uh, that time they pulled their right guard, Dave Lappin, and they have a nice hole. And Archie Griffin finds it in good shape and almost makes the yardage for the first down, just shy by about a half a yard or almost a yard. Archie Griffin started six of the first seven games and sustained the injury, but he's opening here today. Third down and less than a yard to go. Anderson on the third down is going to roll for it. He's got the first down out to the 35-yard line. A very interesting call. Yes, it was. They pulled both guards. Uh, that time, Bujnak and Lappin both pulled on the play, and uh, there was no intention whatsoever to throw the ball. He just rolled out to his right behind the blocking guards and did a good job and picked up the first down. Ken Anderson. He broke the index finger on his passing hand. He's had some elbow problems. He's had some leg problems this year. But he started to put it together. He's thrown a lot of interceptions this year, a total of 19. 
but most of those occurring in the first four or five games since coming back. I'm sure you will see him towing a lot on first down here, too. There's there another he is shot on first. Isaac Curtis. Well, he took a shot from Bias. Rick Bias, the right side cornerback who has two interceptions, went after Isaac Curtis. And that's going to bring up a second and 10 for the 35-yard line. He was open on the play. It was what we call a slant pattern where the receiver just goes down and inside of the defensive back. The ball was just thrown too high and a little bit behind, and as a result, fell incomplete. But he was open on the play. Tight end Rick Walker checks in for Cincinnati. Isaac Curtis comes out. And Billy Brooks split to the bottom of the screen. So they have two tight ends in on this play. Anderson on the second down, Archie Griffin. Griffin is to the 40-yard line. Archie with his 30th catch of the year. He's been a very fine back coming out of that backfield to catch the football. But it's still going to be five yards short of the first down. Mike Lewis and Frank Reed reacted on the play. You know, the other nice thing about Kenny Anderson, he's a very patient quarterback in that he'll look downfield, and he's always aware of the safety valves, meaning the running backs. That time was a great illustration of it. Uh, Archie Griffin was open in the flat. He dunked the ball off to him, and they, they let the backs uh, run in an open area and make the defensive backs or the linebackers make an open field tackle, which is very difficult to do. They mark it at the 41, so it's third and four. Anderson, flag on the play. He's going deep to Billy Brooks. Brooks down there with Lawrence, and Roland Lawrence had it momentarily and could not hang on. But there is a flag, and it's going to go against Cincinnati. Looks like illegal motion on the play. But Brooks with a good speed, but they're picking on a guy in Roland Lawrence, who is one of the best. He has five interceptions this year. Yes, and even and that's one thing that's very difficult to do against this Atlanta team, and that is to throw deep because they play very deep initially. They get good depth from the snap of the ball, and to try to go over up on top of them, especially early in the game, is very difficult to do. So on a fourth down, Pat McAnally, who's second in the AFC in punting with a 43.1 average, will kick from the 25. Robin Lawrence goes back deep for Atlanta. No score, just underway, 10-14 to go in the first quarter. McAnally to Lawrence. Lawrence trying to go wide, a flag on the play, and Lawrence is destroyed inside the 15-yard line. A flag was thrown on the near side of the field, as that time, Lawrence just couldn't get the corner turn. Tom Dinkle, a rookie out of Kansas, the linebacker, making the stop for Cincinnati. A 39-yard kick that time by Pat McAnally. And that penalty, let's see what it's going to do as Cincinnati coming back to the line of scrimmage. I'm sure they're going to try to, they're, they're going to make them kick it again, Gary, and let's see what they call and what happens. Also another flag I see on the other side of the field for two flags. Number 25, illegal downfield. Clipping on a defense. We're going to replay. Offsetting penalty, so they'll do it all over again. The clip, I'm sure, was on this near side of the field. And then the inel ineligible man on the far side of the field. So McAnally will do it again. Boy, he can kick. He trails only Ray Guy of Oakland. Lawrence will go back again for Atlanta. These kind of days, you kind of hold your breath every time you kick or field any kind of a punt because of the weather conditions. Yeah, it could be a two-point play because it goes right through like a basket. <laughs> a lot of times, when that, especially with a tight spiral, uh, Gary, it slides right through there if you're not careful. Back in alley, hits it. Lawrence, about the same spot as the time before. He's going to go to the far side of the field. He's going to make it out to the 30 and close to the 35-yard line. So Atlanta comes away much better with the second effort, and they're going to have the football. Tom Rude coming over, making the stop on number 22, Rollin Lawrence. There's no score at Riverfront Stadium. Introducing a new American road car. The all-new Ford LTD for 1979. With more passenger room, more driver convenience, more handling ease, and more window area than last year's LTD. More room inside to help provide road car comfort on long trips. A V8 engine standard to help provide road car power and acceleration for the long stretch. And for even tough city driving, more handling ease than last year. 
LTD, a road car to take you across town or across the country. This land is your land, this land is my land, from California to the New York Island. Ford LTD for 1979, in two-door, four-door, and wagon models. A new American road car, available now at Ford dealers across the country. With Hank Stram, I'm Gary Bender. We have 9.49 to play in this first quarter. That was a 41-yard kick that time by McAnally, a 17-yard return by Lawrence. It was 17 yards because the ball got down there very quickly, Gary. It was only up in the air 3.4 seconds, which is not very long. From the 35, Atlanta with the football. Markowski giving off to Bubba Bean, the leading rusher on this team, and he may have gotten a pair of yards. Ross Browner, number 79, the number one draft pick out of Notre Dame, who missed the first five games because of a bicep injury. There's Bartkowski. What a job he has done in the past 10 games after not even opening the season as the number one quarterback. He's kind of reaching the expectations that everybody had of him when he first came into professional football. He's a terrific young quarterback, Gary, and he's going to earn the right, I'm sure, to be one of the very fine ones in the business before it's all over with. Second down and eight from the 37-yard line. Barkowski, look out, Browner. Boy, he hit him from the blind side. Barkowski never saw him as Ross Browner, showing why he was picked on that first round. Boy, he came through untouched. Yeah, it looked like a screen he got in there so fast that time. And uh, Mike Ken, number 78, was supposed to be blocking him on the play, but he didn't. And uh, as a result, you saw what happened. Ross Bronner, number 79, really came in and made a great play. That's the 26th sack of the year for Cincinnati, and interestingly enough, that surpasses their entire total of last year when they had 25. So they have improved their pass rush, and in particular, in the last five to six games. So now it's going to bring up third down, 22 yards to go, a little draw play. Bubba Bean, Bean breaks it out across the 30, 35. He's to the 40, he's got the first down as he's to the 45-yard line. So a third and 22, Bubba Bean on a little delay picks up the first down. Yes, it was just a simple draw play and he found the running room. Watch him here, there's a blitz on. And watch the safety man, he had a great shot at making the play, but he just missed it. And uh, as a result, he was able to make a sizable play again on the play. Scott Perry, number 32, was in the hole on a safety blitz and had a shot at making the play, but he missed. Papa Bean last week had 93 yards rushing, which is his high of the year, and he's off to a good start today. This time, stand back. Stand back to the 48 and a half yard line. It's Ross Browner again, and Glenn Cameron, the left side linebacker. So to bring up a second down, and you can see a lot of water standing around the midfield area. There's a flag also at the 45 yard line. And evidently, it will go against Atlanta as the Falcons are backing up. You know, one thing that you have to realize about this Cincinnati team, their young defensive line, Gary Burley, Wilson Whitley, Eddie Edwards. Rolling number 73. And Ross Bronner are all very big, strong, active, fast people. Hard to run on this team consistently and uh, not get yourself in a little trouble. They call themselves the Webb, W-E-B-B, -B, which of course stands for the man up front, Whitley, Edwards, Burley, and Browner. They have great pride in that unit. The penalty against Phil McKinley for holding. He's replacing Warren Bryant. Artkowski, far side. Wallace Francis. And Francis, just across the 35, he may have gained a yard. Reggie Williams over there reacting very well on the play. Francis, that's his 34th catch of the year. One thing about Bartkowski, Hank, is that he has really distributed the passing very equally this year. Yes, he sprayed the ball very well, and this is something that you have to do, and, and uh, it's very obvious any time that you move, move the ball around like he has, it means that you're reading the coverage as well and throwing the ball to the open man, an open receiver, and this is what he's doing extremely well. So they picked up a yard, brings up second and 19 from the 36-yard line. No score, seven minutes remaining, first quarter. Artowski, good protection this time. Complete to Bubba Bean. 
and Bean will be out of bounds at the 38-yard line. They're still a long way short of the first down as Lewis Frieden over there reacting. It'll bring up a third and 17. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Bengals at the National Football League is prohibited. From the 38, third and 17. I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him run some kind of a running play on this situation, uh, Gary. Uh, let's see what they call. Markowski right now kind of throwing the short pattern. Setting up possibly for a longer one. And here comes that long one. Tenant receivers, Alfred Jackson, the rookie from Texas who can fly. He's one of the fastest men on this team. They say he's run the 109-6. So that'll bring up the fourth down. You know, that was a good call. They wanted to get one-on-one, -on -one, and if it wasn't one-on-one, -on -one, they just wanted to throw the ball downfield, and if it was caught, fine if it wasn't, but they didn't take any kind of a risk on the play, and uh, now they have a punting situation. And John James will come in to kick. Tony Davis goes back deep. Davis coming into this football game, done a pretty good job in returning punts. He's averaging 6.2. That's 14th in the league. Here's James. Davis will go back to his 15-yard line. Flag on the play as Davis comes out to the 25. Looks like we may have had a clip thrown behind the return back at the 15-yard line. And that's what it's going to be. So Cincinnati will not have a good field position at all. In a game like this with the weather, boy, field position even becomes more important. It's always a very important factor, but in this kind of weather, as you mentioned, it really is a, a factor. And now the Cincinnati team takes possession. Uh, number 44 on the run back. That's Ray Griffin. That was a 48-yard 48 48-yard 48 kick that time, Gary. There you see it. Awfully close, wasn't it? Well, That's a tough call. His head was in front. Uh-oh. That TV show we want to watch goes on in five minutes. America, stop rushing your life away just to catch a TV show. Get a Sony Betamax video recorder and automatically videotape that show while you're doing something else. And watch it anytime you want. Sony Betamax. It could change your whole way of life. All the guys that do commercials for light beer for Miller are big stars and guys like that. Me, I'm just a humble bartender, but I drink light too. And I'll tell you why. It's less filling, it's got a third less calories than a regular beer, and it tastes great. Hey, Jerry, now that you're a big star, can I have your autograph? Well, sure, Mr. Dangerfield. Hey, would you like mine? Not really. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. How about my initials? Monday, the White Shadow tries to help a star player beat alcoholism. What makes you such an expert? My father was an alcoholic. Win with the White Shadow, Monday night. We, we take another look at this, Gary, and, and here you see Ray Griffin, number 44, throwing a block on Tom Moriarty, number 45. The head was in front, and in my opinion, it definitely was not a clip. But the officials think differently as they now mark the ball just outside the eight-yard line. First down, Cincinnati, no score, 5.57 to go, first quarter. Here comes Archie Griffin. And Archie Griffin made a couple of fine runs in this early part of the game. He brings the ball out about a yard short of the first down. You know, one thing that's very important anytime that you play a team like Atlanta who does so many things defensively, you have to change the rhythm. You have to change the count. Sometimes go on quick counts. Sometimes go on a long count. Uh, you must come out of the huddle quickly because you, if you want to change the play, you have ample time to do that. But they create a lot of problems for the offense, and you have to be well-prepared offensively to cope with it. Green Bay with the lead. Whitehurst to Lofton, giving the Packers a 7 nothing lead over Tampa Bay. Here comes Griffin again. He's got the first down, and he's got more. He's caught up with by Frank Reed, or he would have gone all the way. Archie Griffin, who's been very frustrated this year with Andre and losing his starting job, boy, he has looked impressive. Yes, he, he went into a wall that time and looked like he was stopped. 
It's just a vanilla off tackle play with, with uh, a lead blocker on the part of the fullback, Johnson, but he fights through the traffic in good shape, has the ball in the left arm like he should have it. The right arm is free to, to protect himself and try to get more yardage, but a beautiful run of 31 yards by uh, Griffin that time, Archie Griffin, number 45. So Griffin has really come on strong here in the early going. A first down at the 47. Off to Billy Brooks. Across the midfield stripe. And Brooks has been playing with some hamstring trouble. Advances the ball to the Atlanta end of the field in the vicinity of the 48-yard line. We're getting up very slowly as Roland Lawrence who made the tackle along with Dewey McLean. That's another way to take advantage of the depth of the defensive backs to throw in front in a variety of ways. They try to throw a square out on one occasion and threw over the top, a square out being a pattern where you go down six yards and break to the sideline. On other, two other occasions to take advantage of that depth while they threw quick screen. Los Angeles leading the Giants three to nothing. Frank Corral with a field goal at 20 yards. Here's Archie Griffin again. Oh, this Griffin is looking tough. Inside the 45 to the 44, approximately a yard short. You know, Hank, there's some guys that can run well on a wet surface. Yeah, they, you know, it is funny how that can happen, and a lot of times a, a back who is a, a flat-footed runner, so to speak, they really have good traction and run very well in on a sloppy field or on a wet field like this one is here today. Griffin right now can run on a sloppy field. Let's see if they got their first down. We didn't think they did, but they may have. It'll be very close. Boy, <laughs> look how close that is, would you? They didn't get it, but they didn't miss it by much. So it'll be a third down in a matter of inches. Archie Griffin has run the ball four times and has gained 51 yards already in the early stage of this game. You know, he's had only one 100-yard day in his career, so he might be headed for quite a day. The rest might have been just what the doctor ordered. That's right. He had the toe stepped on and smashed it. He was on crutches for two weeks. Then he tried to come back too quick, and he favored a leg and pulled a groin. Now he's evidently healthy. Dave Turner now has come in. Also, Tony Davis and Pete Johnson. Three backs are in on this short yardage situation. And they're going to give it to Pete Johnson. And it looks like he may have gotten it, but it wasn't easy. Pete Johnson, big, strong guy, 242-pounder. Second year man out of Ohio State, their leading rusher. Yes, and he's like uh, a tackle back there in the backfield because he is big and strong. And in that kind of a situation, he really does a good job because he's got a good surge. And when he gets the shoulder pads into a hole, he drives people back and uh, makes things happen. Archie Griffin comes back in to join Johnson in the backfield. A new series now operating for the 42 of Atlanta. See if they throw on first down. Let's see what happens. You called it. Far side, Don Bass. A tight end that Bass can't hang on. Bass, a rookie out of Houston, a third-round draft pick. Greg Brazina, Frank Reed defending on the play. This Bass actually is almost like a wide receiver. He caught a 51-yard touchdown pass earlier this year against Cleveland. Yes, I was very impressed with him uh, when I saw him play against Oakland several weeks ago, but he uh, was a dominant factor in the total offensive scheme in that game. I think uh, Anderson threw for 360-some yards in that game, and... Uh, this young receiver did an excellent job. Don Bass, number 84, who's caught 17 balls going into this game here today. Second and 10 from the 42. They have Curtis put out to the bottom. And Brooks, here's the pass to Archie Griffin. Griffin sheds one, he sheds two, and he runs into trouble. Boy, really paid the price on that one as Kuykendall, Fulton Kuykendall, and Dewey McLean eventually caught up with him. But again, Griffin showing the ability to have good peripheral vision, cutting back against the tackle. You know, it's very obvious that he has good eyes, and I think any time that you run as much as he has with such great success, you have to have good vision because there's a lot of scenes that you have to uh, read on the spur of the moment. He does that very well, and especially from the eye formation. Third and five from the 37-yard line. Two minutes remaining in this first quarter. We have no score. Atlanta get back. Blitz. Here is Pete Johnson, the big fullback. That's not going to be enough for the first down, but a flag has been thrown on the far side of the field, and Atlanta may be offside. Dewey McLean making the tackle again for the Falcons. 
See if they were drawn up. For it. They had a lot of people blitzing on the play. That's what it is, offside against Atlanta. That would give them a first down. That's what I alluded to earlier, Gary. You have to change the rhythm and change the count because if you go on the same count throughout the game, the defense has a great opportunity to anticipate the cadence just like the offense does, and sometimes they have an advantage and beat you across the line of scrimmage. That time, because the cadence was different, why they were able to get them offside. Seven okay. offside defense. Well, let's see. Is the penalty going to be enough for the first down? They may have to. Nope, they're just going to be short of it. By what? A half yard, maybe? That's all. Very close. Third down and less than a yard to go. Let's we'll see if we get another high diddle diddle up the middle with Johnson. They have the full house backfield in again. Nope. Here comes Dave Turner. Turner is going to make the first down. Close to the 30-yard line. So Cincinnati keeps this drive going. Fulton Kuykendall. Now here's the guy, number 54, for Atlanta. That The Falcon coaches tell me he's playing like an all-pro. There's nobody better, they feel, in the game right now. Yeah, they feel that he's one of the key reasons for the great success that they've enjoyed defensively again this year. But he's an outstanding player and uh, played his... Uh, collegiate football at UCLA. They call him Captain Crazy. He's been in on 200 tackles this year. He was hurt last year. He got hurt in the fifth week of the year with a broken arm. Let's see if they throw the ball again on first down. First down as we have a minute 46 remaining in the first quarter from the 29. They do. Anderson, good protection. Isaac Curtis almost intercepted. Isaac Curtis looked like he had that one. Frank Reed thought he had it. He was wide open. There was a crossing pattern coming underneath. They had a lot of room. There was a big cushion, and I say big cushion, meaning that the defensive backs were very soft and very deep, and as a result, you can throw in front of them, as I mentioned earlier, but he threw the ball a little bit high. He still should have made the catch, but it was incomplete. Brings up second down. Curtis isn't going to drop very many of those. No, but it's important, especially on a crossing pattern, to get the ball to the numbers. That time, it was way high and was easy to slip through. Anderson again to throw. Blitz was on, picked off almost by Bias. Curtis again, the intended receiver, but Rick Bias was there. The secondary staying on him pretty tight. Now we have maybe a roughing the passer coming up. I think it was a roughing the quarterback. Let's see what they call it. They had the blitz on. Of course, that's nothing unusual for this football team. In fact, in a game against Los Angeles this year, they had 60 plays, and they blitzed on 40 of them. Yeah, they come off the bus blitzing. Let's see who did it. Personal foul, roughing the passer, defense number 50, first down. That's Greg Brazina, a veteran from Houston in his 11th year. This would be a good time for a draw play, Gary. They threw the ball the last three times on first and 10 situations, and uh, it might be that the Atlanta team would be anticipating another pass, and a draw would be a good play. Let's see what he calls. So the penalty moves it to the 15-yard line. In motion is Archie Griffin, Pete Johnson, and Johnson is able to get close to the 12-yard line. They say that Johnson is a load to tackle. In other words, you hit him, you got to really hang on to him because he's not going to go down initially. No, he's, he's like trying to tackle a rolling manhole cover. It really is. He's big and he's strong and he really, and once he gets a little speed, a little momentum, he's tough to bring down. Gain of three, second and seven. The Ohio State connection in that backfield. Pete Johnson, along with Archie Griffin. Both, of course, teammates for Woody Hayes' team. One a year ahead of the other. Griffin in his third year. Johnson is second. On the 12-yard line, and Griffin, the intended receiver. That just didn't develop well. No, the timing of that play was very poor. He saw the blitzing linebacker come and he tried to get rid of the ball before he really had to and as a result it fell incomplete this is a tough area in the field of score you can't afford to waste plays really the way that turned out that was a wasted play and uh, now they have a third uh, down situation change is coming in now as wilson bombwina dewey mclean check in mike lewis and jim bailey check out of the atlanta pitcher on a third down third and seven Uh, 
Adam may have jumped off again. No flag this time. Complete to Johnson. And they're not going to get much on that play. So it's a fourth down coming up. Dewey McLean was over there again. And this has been the story of Atlanta. They'll bend a little bit, but they don't break very easy. Yeah, it's really tough. And you know, they have a tendency in this area to blitz the strong safety or the weak safety. And it really, really creates a problem. And what it does really kind of intimidates the quarterback. And he anticipates certain things in this area of the field. And if they come, why he's prepared. If he isn't, why uh, then, of course, it really becomes a problem. And uh, Atlanta really did a great job on those last three plays. Chris Bard will attempt a 31-yard field goal. He's 11 of 23 this year, and he got it. So Cincinnati has taken a 3-0 lead with 39 seconds left in this first quarter of play. A very impressive drive by the Bengals, who have the advantage. These are two of today's newest razors. The one on the right is the new Norelco Rotary Razor. This one has two blades. The new Norelco 36. This one pivots up and down. The new Norelco has three adjustable heads that float and a new shaving angle. Both give you a close shave, but there is one thing they offer that Norelco doesn't. Gotcha. The new Norelco Rotary Razor. Very close, but no gotcha. Introducing Hertz Takeoff Rate. Save up to 35% on the average weekday rental when you take off Thursday through Sunday for a minimum of two to three days. Take off in a subcompact for only $13.95 a day. Fairmont $15.95. Granada $17.95. Thunderbirds $21.95 a day. All with no charge for mileage. There are some restrictions, so check with Hertz. Take off next weekend with Hertz Low Takeoff Rate. Chris Barr, who just booted his 12th field goal of the season to give the Bengals a 3 to nothing lead. Look at that drive. Five minutes and 18 seconds. 76 yards. Impressive effort by Cincinnati. Dennis Pearson back for the Falcons, and he's not going to bring it up. A very wise decision as Barr got into that one very well. So they bring it out to the 20-yard line. And Atlanta, who has been playing catch-up football almost the entire season, finds themselves trailing 3 to nothing. You know, they're a very unusual team. You know, Gary, they play a lot better seemingly in the games that I've seen them play. They play a lot better offensively when they're behind than they are when they, than they do when they're ahead or even in the game. You know, in the second half, they've outscored teams 107 to 61. That's amazing. Of the 20, Bubba Bean. Bean picks up five, maybe six, as he's hammered out to the 25-yard line. Jim LaFleur and Ross Browner again making the tackle. Well, you know, the Falcons have won six of their last seven, and they've won three games in the last 10 seconds, four games in the last two minutes. Yeah, they're, they've really been incredible, and really to have any kind of a playoff hope uh, and get to the Super Bowl, that's the kind of a year you have, have to have because it's, uh, it's very difficult to win consistently in this league. You have to have a lot of help, and they've received a lot of it, and they've made a lot of things happen, which is to their credit. Well, the first quarter has come to a close here at Riverfront Stadium. The Cincinnati Bengals on the strength of a 31-yard field goal by Chris Barr at the lead. When you shoot a lot of foreign bars, you want to stay fast and loose, and you don't want to get filled up. That's why I drink light beer from Miller. It's got a third less calories than their regular beer, and it's less filling. Plus, the taste is great. And even though a lot of people don't think foolish, strenuous, let me tell you something. You can work up a real good thirst, even when you're just showing off. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. All across the country, Sears is helping get ready for Christmas. And now Sears helps you with a Craftsman tool sale. This 7-inch circular saw with motor that develops a maximum 1 and 2 thirds horsepower. This variable speed saver saw with floor knob. A Craftsman dual motion pad sander with built-in dust pickup. And variable speed reversible 3 8 inch drill. Just $34.99 each. All across the country, Sears comes home for Christmas. We start the second quarter of play at Riverfront Stadium. Cincinnati with a 3 to nothing lead. Atlanta has the football. Second down four from their own 26-yard line. Markowski thus far in this game has hit two of three for a total of three yards. 
And he's going to throw for the fourth time. Complete to Wallace Francis. And Francis has the first down just outside the 30-yard line. And I'm sure he's the, the player they're going to pick on whenever they feel they want to throw the ball. That's Lewis Breeden, number 34. They threw in front of him that time. And uh, in the games that I have seen, why most teams have been able to, to explore that area and really do a good job. So Bartkowski now brings his team to the line of scrimmage with a first down at the 31. Rickman to the top of the screen, Wallace Francis to the bottom. I give to Bubba Bean. Looked like that play was going to develop, but all of a sudden it was closed down by middle linebacker Jim LeClaire. Forward progress to the 33-yard line, a gain of three. Second and seven, Ricky Patton, number 33, is going to come in. He's the rookie out of Jackson State, which produced another guy that's not a bad football player by the name of Peyton. Looks like we have a man shaken up right now. That is Haskell Standback. So that's the reason Patton comes in. A Standback is walking off very slowly off the field. Standback having quite a year for this football team. 527 yards rushing. He had 112 yards against Tampa earlier this year. He scored 19 touchdowns, setting a new career Falcon record. Unusual, however, that he doesn't hadn't caught many passes. He's only caught eight passes going into this game. Thus far, Atlanta having a tough time getting things on track. Second and seven from the 34. Patton goes to the top of the screen, flanked out. Artkowski, head of receiver again, Dennis Pearson. You know, that time they had a slot formation to the right side and send the, sent the halfback in motion, but they tried to throw in front of Breeden again, but because the slot man was so close to the outside receiver, it put the linebacker in that area also, and as a result, it was difficult to get the ball in front of Breeden, a lot more difficult than it would have been had the tight end just stayed in tight and they threw to the right side. Bo Harris checks into the linebacking spot. Dick Juron comes in for Cincinnati on a third and seven. Bartkowski on the third and seven. Nice protection. Complete to Ricky Patton. And Patton has the first down and then some. Close to the 50-yard line. Marvin Cobb eventually dropped him, but Patton, with only his eighth catch of the year, showed very good quickness. Yes, he did. And he used good judgment that time. Uh, Francis, and uh, there you see, he's got a lot of room. The defensive backs and the linebackers got good depth. He fought his way through some traffic. And Louis Breeden, number 34, really was the first one who made the tackle. A pickup to the 49-yard line. First down. 16-yard gain on the play. Arkowski, a little pressure. Oh, what a completion to Wallace Francis. Reggie Williams making the stop. Arkowski threw that ball, falling down. He had to throw it just where he threw it. He threw it right at the numbers. It was a play-action pass. Francis was wide open, going from the right side of the field to the left side. Watch it. It's a play-action pass, faking with his hand, rolling out to his right. He anchors, gets rid of the ball, had to throw it right where he threw it, or else it would have been an incompleted pass or possibly an interception. Had he thrown it behind, it would have been definitely an interception. A great play by Steve Bartkowski. Boy, he showed me an arm on that play. The ball at the 33-yard line. First down, and the Falcons are on the move. See if they run left this time. That's where they're going. Baba Bean's going to carry it. And Bubba Bean is inside the 30-yard line. From that formation last week, they put both receivers on the right side of the ball, which is a slot formation, send the tailback in motion to the left, and then gave the ball to the fullback, Bean, uh, to the left side with a guard pulling. They did exactly the same thing on that last formation, and it was good for five yards on the play. Boy, this Bubba Bean makes quite a difference to this Atlanta team. He was out last year with an knee injury. This year, he's come back averaging... Over three and a half yards to carry. Second and six, Ricky Patton. Patton is cut down in a hurry by Wilson Whitley. Also Earl Edwards in on the stop. And it's going to come to a third down and still three yards to go. It's unusual, however. You see how much more aggressive they seem now that they're behind in the ball game. This is the best drive they've had so far. 
but here again it started when they were behind in the ball game and they do a much better job now than they did earlier when it was zip zip they play under pressure and in peril they seem to like it third down three yards to go offside there's a give to Patton he's going to be smothered but offside as you called it Patton just didn't have a chance on that play and there again the cadence was changed the tempo was different and as a result they tried to anticipate the count but they didn't and as a result jumped offside and that will give Atlanta a first down as they had a third and three the five yard step off will move the ball inside the 25 to the 23 yard line well let's make it 21 offside at first down 55 is Jim LeClaire the middle linebacker there you see Jim LeClaire, number 55, coming across there. Got caught in no man's land and uh, penalty on the play. From the 21-yard line, first down. Markowski, 5 of 7 now for 41 yards. Looking to Dennis Pearson. Oh, he had to thread the needle on that one because defenders are all over the place, particularly... Lewis Breeden. Yeah, he was there, but there a little bit too late, and he was lucky to make the reception. The ball was thrown just a little bit too high. It would have been perfect had he thrown it at the numbers, but it was a little high, but he still made the catch, and Breeden had a chance to go over the top and almost jarred it loose. Pick up a six. Boy, Green Bay now leading 10 to nothing. Los Angeles leading the Giants 10 to nothing. L.A. can clinch at NFC West with a win today. Second and four, just inside the 15-yard line. See if they run right this time. Nobody but one running back, Bubba Bean, behind him. And he's got the football, and Bean is to the five. He has a first and goal. Marvin Cobb, the strong safety, eventually made the tackle, but first and goal Atlanta at the four. They had both receivers to the left that time. The halfback was to the right side, and Bubba Bean, number 44, through, goes through a gapping hole. Good blocking on the right side with Thieleman, McKinney, and Jeff Van Note, all of whom did a great job on the play. So from the four-yard line, first and goal. Ted Vincent has checked in as a goal line situation for Cincinnati. Markowski gets to Ricky Patton, and Patton finds it difficult. He may have hammered out a couple of yards. Patton playing a place of the injured Haskell standback. And now Wallace Francis will come in as a wide receiver. Second and goal, they mark it to the two. Atlanta with that fine, young offensive line. They're missing one of their key players, though, Warren Bryant, who underwent surgery. He's out for the year with an knee injury. Phil McKinley replacing him, but they have Stillman, Van Notes, Scott, Ken, up front, Young, and there's vastly improving. Give the Bubba Bean, and I don't believe he made it. He wanted to go airborne, but he couldn't get up the way he wanted to. And so now the ball is just on top of the one. He tries to go over the top. It looked like it might be a trap play, but uh, the defensive line of Cincinnati really did a great job of getting penetration, and uh, the ball is still on about the one-yard line. They've gone to a five-man front on this goal line situation. Linebackers are LeClaire, Cameron are in there. Here we go, third and goal at the one. Ricky Patton, he's in, touchdown. And Cincinnati is arguing they do not feel he made it in. But the headlines have been indicating that Ricky Patton did score, and it's now 6-3 to three in favor of Atlanta. Somebody hit him right at the line of scrimmage, but he fought through the traffic. Great effort, great second effort here. Watch him. He gets a shot. He got plugged up there, but he got through. Just barely, just barely. It's very, very close. He spun around on that elbow, but was he down before he got to the elbow? Boy, that's a close call. Tim Mazzetti to attempt the point after John James to hold. And at the 7.57 mark, it's a 7-3 football game in favor of the Atlanta Falcons. So Ricky Patton scores the touchdown 
That's his first touchdown of the year. Seven to three, the Falcons. Kathy, what are you doing in the dark? Waiting for Santa. Ho, ho, ho. I wonder what he'll bring me. Well, have you been a good little girl? Person. Good mm. little person. Hey, person. Merry Christmas. Oh. Make a dream come true this Christmas from Christmas Dreams Diamond Collection 79. Tough Ford Trucks. America's best selling truck line. Ford Tough. Tough Couriers. And Tough Pickups. Tough Four Wheelers and Broncos. And Tough Vans. Tough big trucks, tough Ford trucks. America's best-selling truck line. Who's America's greatest band leader? America's greatest band leader is Fidel. Fidel. America's greatest band leader is Fidel. Fidel's elegant new band leader is Thin Line 2, the thinnest twist of flex ever. It'll make your old watch look new or your new watch look better. America's greatest band leader is Fidel. Fidel. Well, let's take a look at this again. Look, a Ricky Patton is flying through the air, and as he falls, he falls sideways. And it really doesn't look like the ball is across the goal line. It's hard to tell from this angle, but from, from this spot, it really do doesn't look like he made it. Kicking off is Mazzetti. This is Ray Griffin bringing it out for Cincinnati. He's got some running room. Archie Griffin's younger brother, and he is out close to the 40-yard line. And he will give Cincinnati excellent field position. And the guy that kicked off, Tim Mazzetti, made the tackle. There you see Griffin 44, and there you see the seam. It opens up nicely. He sees it well and gets into the hole very quickly, fights through a tackler, and finally Mazzetti, number four, makes the tackle in the open field. Archie Griffin averaging 20.1 on kickoff returns. That time returned to 24 yards. And from the 39, that's where the Bengals will set it up. 7-3, to three, Atlanta with the lead. Ken Anderson on first down. He's cranking up to Isaac Curtis. Broken up at the last second by Rick Byer. That had six points on it. Yes, it did. He made an outside move and then went up the field. Anderson threw it a little bit behind. Bias did a good job of uh, anticipating the flight of the ball and uh, knocked it down. But he had him licked had he thrown the ball deep enough. See that last drive, seven minutes and 38 seconds. 80-yard drive earlier. A 76-yard drive taking over five minutes netted three points for Cincinnati. So both these teams have had pretty good sustained offenses. Second and ten, seven and a half minutes to go before halftime. At halftime, the NFL today will catch up on what's happening. Here comes Archie Griffin. And Archie Griffin's having some day as he's across the 45 to the 48-yard line. They caught him in a blitz that time. They were blitzing. They ran a play, a trap play up the middle. There was a gapping hole. Archie Griffin saw the cavity, took advantage of it nicely, and made a sizable gain of, on the play. Boy, well, here's the score that interests Atlanta. Miami is leading Washington 3-0, and next week Atlanta plays host to the Redskins. Of course, Washington and Atlanta identical 8-5 and five record. Griffin now has 60 yards on five carries. Not too bad. Third down, a yard to go from the 48-yard line. Rick Walker, Jim Corbett, two tight ends have come in now for the Bengals. And we're going to have a timeout called by Cincinnati as Ken Anderson wants to talk it over with Coach Homer Wright. 6.48 remaining in this first half. Atlanta trying to continue their move to the playoffs and have a battle on their hands. You know, for too long now, bowers have been left out of light beer commercials. And football players have been grabbing all the glory. But bowlers know light beer from Miller tastes great. We know light's got a third less calories than the regular beer. We know light's less filling. Bowlers love light just as much as football players. That's right. 
And we also love the easy opening can. <laughs> like beer from Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. This is the world's most revolutionary telephone switching invention. We call it Super Switcher. It handles four times more calls and may save us a billion dollars a year. Just imagine that each of these cars is a long-distance call. Super Switcher could handle five days' traffic on a busy L.A. freeway. That ought to prevent traffic jams on your long-distance calls. Bell System Technology, keeping your phone system the best in the world. 6.48 remaining in this first half. As we come back to the action, Cincinnati with a third down one from their own 48-yard line. They trail 7-3. to three. Well, they've run straight ahead from this formation. They ran a sweep from this formation. Uh, I'm sure they have other things from it, too. Maybe a play-action pass. Full house backfield. Archie Griffin, he's going to throw. He's waiting for someone to clear that someone is Corbett, the tight end. Jim Corbett. Boy, we've had more gadget plays this year. Well, that's the nice thing about being 1-12. and 12. There's a lot of things you can do. You can play, be very loose and experiment with a lot of things. That, that was a great illustration of it. They showed that formation three times, did three different things from it, and that's why here he is. He's, he does a good job of acting on the play. He runs right and pulls the pin like he throws a hand grenade, but he gets it there in good shape. It looked like it might blow up in the air, but it got there in good <laughs> shape and first and 10 Cincinnati. You don't recommend him as a quarterback. <laughs> Archie Griffin was a completion. 16 yards. Yes, sir, to the 34-yard line. Corbett with his 11th catch of the year. Anderson in trouble. So a loss back to the 40-yard line. You can expect some of that happening through the course of the day with the weather conditions being what they are. Greg Brazina was back there in a hurry to pounce on number 14. And so the loss back to the 40 is going to make it second down, 16 to go. You know, they lost they lost a down the last time they were in the scoring area by throwing a bad ball. Uh, this time they put themselves in a predicament on first down by fumbling. It makes it tough, and it really makes it tough to keep that drive alive. And that's one reason sometimes you're 1 and 12. That's exactly true. Second down and 16. Anderson unloading. Billy Brooks, but... Defended very well by Lawrence. Roland Lawrence. Roland Lawrence last year had seven interceptions, which led the NFC. Two touchdowns. He has five this year. He only weighs about 179 pounds, but boy, you pick on him, you better be ready. You know, one thing uh, about the way this field looks, the, the rain has stopped, but the outside of the field, the sideline areas, are very moist, very wet, and as a result, it's tough to make your cuts because the drainage goes to the sideline and there's a lot of water standing in the area of the sidelines on both sides of the field. Third and 16. Oh, offside Atlanta. Anderson hit as he releases the ball. He's got it to Brooks. Billy Brooks down to the five. Lawrence caught up with him. Anderson was down, but the guy that downed him is hurt back at the 48 yard line. A 35 yard pass. They showed a lot of poise. They knew there was a penalty on the play, but they stayed in the pocket. Everybody ran out their patterns and maintained their responsibilities, and that's what you have to do. A lot of times you'll see a team stop, and thinking the penalty is on them, they become the officials instead of players. That time they went ahead with the play, wound up with a good good gain in the first and 10 that's situation. Rob, excuse me, Hank. That's Robert Pennywell who was shaken up, and now at the other end, Brooks is hurt. So Brooks, who caught the pass, is shaken up. Pennywell is hurt. We're going to have a timeout. We'll be back with 5.23 remaining in this first half. Zenith announces a breakthrough. A breakthrough. System 3. System 3. The best Zenith ever. The best ever. A brand new picture tube for the sharpest. Introducing KMI 672. A powerful new car battery that's completely maintenance-free. Hook the 672 to this electric winch, and it can pull this 44-ton diesel locomotive, the Kmart 672, packed with power to deliver surefire starts. If it can pull this 44-ton locomotive, you better believe it can start your car. Check it out at most Kmart automotive departments across the USA, where quality auto parts are Kmart price.
Next Saturday on CBS, the Minnesota Vikings bump heads with the Detroit Lions in a black and blue division matchup. You'll say, you saw it on CBS Sports. Well, Billy Brooks is being helped off the field. He's been having some hamstring trouble. He just caught a 35-yard pass, and now he's, looks like his progress is going to be halted. He will not be playing if that's what it looks like right now, doesn't it? So here's a play again, and you see Jeff Yates was offside on the play, but they carried through with the responsibility. There you see Billy Brooks with the ball right at the numbers, perfectly thrown. Good play. And there you see him scampering right on down to about the six-yard line. And he's finally tackled there by Lawrence, number 22. First and goal at the six-yard line. They've reset the game clock. They forgot to shut it off. They got it set back at 5.50, which is the correct time, and Archie Griffin takes off. Archie Griffin had 60 yards prior to that carry inside the five. They're going to mark it at about the three-yard line. Well, it'll be second and goal there. Ralph Ortega made the stop. Ortega coming in now, replacing Pennywell. Also, Fulton Kuykendall. 7-3, Atlanta, but now Cincinnati with a chance to go back on top. 87 coming in is Pat McEnally. He's flanked to the top of the screen. He replaces the injured Brooks. Up the middle, and taking it in is Pete Johnson. Johnson from three yards out, and in a seesaw game here at Riverfront Stadium. The left side of the offensive line really did a good job. Mike Wilson, Bujnak, Blair Bush, the offensive center, they got a good thrust off the line of scrimmage, and as a result, Johnson was able to pop through there nicely and make the touchdown. Nine to seven, the point after attempt coming up by Chris Barr. Barr puts it up, he's got it. And Cincinnati, for the second time in this game, enjoys a three-point lead as we go back to the touchdown run. A nice hole there. And 77, Mike Wilson really does a good job on 59, Robert Pennywell. A buddy has many faces, all calling to you. Come, paddle my quiet lagoon. Discover my miles of endless peace. Come walk across my volcanoes. Explore my mysterious caverns. Come play in my tropical wonderland. Come fly my airline to Hawaii. United, we built the largest airline in the free world. Next time you wonder what white wine to drink, think of Gallo Rhine. 